until 1066, when William, born of a witch, symbol of Lucifer on his banner, conquered and unified England under a single ruler. The Bayeux Tapestry, which tells the story of this invasion, shows how pervasive were the old ideas. An apparent cross on the shield, with its swirling arms, is a symbol of the sun, Lucifer. Harold is made to swear on two altars, one pagan, one Christian, neither sufficient by itself. Consultation with a witch priestess. Astrological significance of a comet. Many fertility figures. Under William, the subtly dispersed but immensely influential ecclesiastical power was faced with a mighty, undisguised pagan temporal power. The dynasty of the Plantagenets was powerful enough to be beyond the grasp of the church. But among the people, the church had more power. Some of the old beliefs, such as Robin Hood's witch coven, twelve merry men and a priestess made Marian, The Virgin Mary, mother goddess, escaped into legend. But that other maid, the maid of Orleans, Joan of Arc, not disguising her beliefs as a witch, was destroyed. That the pagan rulers nevertheless feared the power of the church is shown by the story of how the order of the Knights of the Garter was formed. The Countess of Salisbury, dancing with Edward III, dropped her garter, which Edward swiftly picked up, put around his own leg and said, Oni soit qui mal y pense, evil be to he who evil thinks. But the garter is the insignia of a witch. Edward not only saved the Countess from the church, he also created the order of 13 knights, with himself as their leader, and for the Prince of Wales, another 13. On his cloak are 168 small garters, which, with the one on his own leg, makes 13 times 13 covens. Apart from the decorations on churches and magical ceremonies inside houses, pagan rites, witchcraft, took place quite openly. These were known as the witches' sabbath. Witches were said to fly to the sabbath and used for this a flying ointment, here being rubbed over a young woman. Generally, Deserted places were used, but to these places would come many hundreds of people. Records say that for the four big seasonal Sabbaths of the year, thousands would attend. It must be remembered that witches were the priests and priestesses of a religion believed in and practiced by the whole population before the arrival of Christianity. Like the two altars in the Bayer tapestry, some priests belonged to both religions. And there are accounts of Christian priests reprimanded for being at a witch's Sabbath. The witches, who were later tortured for it, all confessed to the joy and pleasure they got at these meetings. There would be dancing in circles, musicians, a feast. They would meet their friends, and whole families would come. The image of a witch as being a toothless old woman was just as likely to be a laughing child or a beautiful young girl. At some of the Sabbaths, especially in spring, with its natural connection with fertility, fertility rites took place. And although, as admitted, everyone enjoyed these rites, their ritual intent 
does not warrant the degrading description of sexual orgy. When the persecution of the witches grew more intense, informers and chance witnesses were killed. Presiding over all these Sabbaths was their chief priest or devil, depending on the point of religion. He often wore a goat's mask, a symbol of virility for the fertility rites. As a finale to the Sabbath, Christianity made much of the infamous kiss, in which, as a sign of submission, the new initiate was asked to kiss the priests behind. Perhaps the intensity of the attacks by the Christians forced ever more stringent and binding oaths of faith on the pagans. But if the pagans had some doubtful rites and qualities, the repressive laws and ferocious tortures practiced on them by the Christians were even more barbaric. 